Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless all across the country today we saw pride on display in a country known for taking pride in its red white and blue today a rainbow of colors paraded down city streets celebrating pride events intended to reflect the diversity of the community and spectrum of sexuality here in New York City, the Pride Parade has been around since 1970. I think it's so important for us to show up in numbers, especially when there are people trying to erase our existence sometimes. Pride Parade celebrations in Denver, Cincinnati, and Seattle. We have been and will be a place where every person is welcome, a place where every person is invited to thrive and to give back to the community. Pride Nights were celebrated this month at Major League Baseball stadiums around the country, showing support for LGBTQ plus fans in Tampa, Detroit, and Washington, D.C., where a banner read, Love and Acceptance Rises Above All. In Boston, this fan proudly sporting a rainbow Boston cap. And earlier this month, the annual Pride Parade and Festival in Charleston. For me, like, I grew up very sheltered, and I wasn't able to be myself for a little. Happy Pride! At today's Pride Parade in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've grown up in a very loving home and a very loving community, but just being here around people like me and like my girlfriend, I'm happy to be here and feeling accepted. It's really comforting. People need to know that they can be themselves. If they're not themselves, then they won't be happy. They need, it's nice to see everybody happy. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that he is the creator of all things and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists. God demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator. And when a society does not glorify him as God, he gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. It is evident by looking at society that we are in the third and final judgment on America. In these last days, society has not retained God in their knowledge, and in return, God has given them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. When a nation tells God that they no longer want or need Him, and actually tell Him to go away so they can wallow in their sins, eventually God says, Okay. Verse 32 brings Romans chapter 1 to an end with a very bleak view of human nature. The point of the last half of the verse is to show that many people not only do things that they know deserve death, but also entice others to do them and approve when they do. In other words, the end point of depravity is not just the love affair with sin, but the desire to bring others with you to destruction. It's not just that people choose death for themselves in the passion of sin, but that they become suicidal at the spiritual level. 
and assist others in eternal self-destruction by approving their sin. We are watching this play out right before our very eyes. When the world crossed the line with gay marriage, those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ knew that sexual immorality would now progress into an anything goes mentality. God gives a dire warning to anyone who would cause a child to sin, as we read in Matthew 18, 6 and 7. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. Offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Well, today, Pride Parades fill the streets of cities across this country with the final weekend of Pride Month. With new legislation aimed at the LGBTQ plus community, for many, Pride is not just a party, it's a protest. There were hundreds of Pride events around the country, but the biggest right here in New York, where the message was solidarity when it's needed most. The streets of New York were filled with both pride and joy. It makes me really happy to be here. I feel like there's just really good vibes. It's so beautiful to just see people be human. Thousands packed the parade route in a show of support for the LGBTQ community. It's to show people that we're here and that we have voices and we're going to be heard. But even with pride events from Chicago to Seattle to San Francisco, this year's celebration is dampened by what many see as a backlash against gay and transgender rights. Our community is under attack right now. Nationally, it's under attack. This month, Missouri became the 20th state to restrict or ban gender-affirming medical care for minors. The Anti-Defamation League and advocacy group GLAAD say anti-LGBTQ incidents are on the rise, leading to more security at this year's events. We're going to have our most experienced officers working throughout the night. Here in New York, Governor Kathy Hochul reaffirmed the state's protection for the LGBTQ community. We're going to make New York a safe haven for trans youth from all across this country. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. Jehovah said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have died. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were full of evil, licentiousness, rampant with murder, and indulgence in extravagant pleasures. They reached the point of clamoring against God, of fighting against him, and raging his disposition. Where are the men which came into you this night? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. After the angels took Lot and his family out of the city, burning sulfur rained down from the sky. The raging fire lit up the heavens. Hurry! Hurry up! Oh, my house! Our lives are on the line. Who cares about the house? I'm not afraid. Just one look. Just one look. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, 
apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Chile is facing the worst weather front in the decade, officials say, as towns across the country are flooded by overflowing rivers, including the main Mapocho River in Santiago, after days of rainfall. The flooding around the city's main waterway has cut off routes leading towards the Pacific Ocean, hitting families who live on its banks and leaving small towns isolated. Authorities said on Saturday at least two people had died, Three were missing and hundreds had lost their homes. Kayaks and helicopters were deployed to extract victims who were trapped. No, no, this woman says her house was flooded and everything was floating in the water. There was nothing she could do. Chilean President Gabriel Boric visited one of the affected regions. People are going through rough times. All they need is aid to arrive, for the government to be present. But you have seen that neighbor solidarity is fundamental, people helping the people. Climate change drives increasingly extreme weather. The recent downpour in Chile comes just a few months after the devastating wildfires amid a severe drought. The fires destroyed hundreds of homes and left dozens of people dead. Matthew 24, 3-8 Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars? See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The term birth pains is an illustration based on how a woman goes through labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and in intensity until the baby finally comes. So we can expect pestilence in the form of weather to continue to be more frequent and more intense right up to the time of Jesus' second coming. Should we be concerned about so-called climate change? No. These things are prophesied and must take place. Christians can take comfort because these signs are telling us that the time of the Lord's return is near. As these things get worse, and they will, we know that the Lord's return is not far away. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. Given in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, the Apostle Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Things will continue to get worse, and what we are seeing is just the beginning. But take heart. Jesus said this in Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now to the weather and a deadly storm system that hit parts of the Midwest and the South with tornadoes and powerful thunderstorms. Take a look at this twister sending debris. Looks like something out of a movie, right? Flying, the debris flying in that picture. Carved a dangerous three-mile path southeast of Indianapolis yesterday. At least three tornadoes were confirmed, were confirmed rather, in Indiana, and one person, unfortunately, was killed there. This tornado quickly turned massive after touching down in Johnson County outside of Indianapolis on Sunday. Cutting through homes and hurling debris hundreds of feet into the air. All of a sudden you look out your back door and all of a sudden you see a tornado coming toward the ground. The twister ravaged parts of Bargersville, ripping roofs off dozens of homes, including John Keats. All the roof lifted up and all the nail pops. Keats says he saw his walls and windows crumble around him as he took cover in his bathroom. It was overwhelming uh, to see your house uh, and, and see the outside and know that you were just sitting there and you could have been dead. 
Officials say at least 75 homes were damaged there. No one was injured. But just an hour south in Martin County, officials there say one person died and another was injured after a tornado completely leveled their home. Across the south, severe thunderstorms swept through parts of central Arkansas Sunday night, bringing down power lines and trees that blocked streets. More than 120,000 people lost power as the state enters the hottest week of the year. Temperatures in the south hitting historic triple digits for the third week in a row. Some spots reaching more than a scorching 110 degrees. From Texas. This year it feels higher than regular. To Louisiana. We've got heat advisories as the heat has expanded all the way up to Memphis. More than 40 million Americans are under heat alerts during an unrelenting heat wave that's now turning deadly. At Big Bend National Park, officials say a 14 year old boy died after passing out while hiking in 119 degree heat. Now, with more blistering heat on the way, the Texas power grid is being pushed to its limits. Its operator, ERCOT, issuing a weather watch all the way through Friday, bracing for record-breaking demand. As people try to beat the heat any way they can. Priscilla is joining us now from Houston. So Priscilla, when are people there going to catch a break? Hallie, not anytime soon. We're on track to see more than 80 temperature records shattered this week across the southwest and central plains with temperatures on track to reach more than 112 degrees. Pestilence in the form of extreme heat that we are experiencing right now will be nothing compared to what's coming in the tribulation as we read in Revelation 16, 8 and 9. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. As 80 fires burn across the Quebec region, residents of Montreal go about their lives bathed in smoke. Yeah, the odor is pretty strong. Immediately I had to get a mask because I knew this is not the type of quality of air we had to be breathing in. It's harder for her because she has asthma. It's like fog, really, except it's the smoke from the forest fires. We're really struggling to breathe. As of 4 p.m. on Sunday, technology company IQ Air named Montreal the world's most polluted city, with a rating of 230, classified as very unhealthy, beating out Kuwait City and Tehran by some distance. But it hasn't been business as usual for residents. The city council published advice to stay indoors, announced the closure of outdoor sports facilities and warned that some events will be cancelled. These included an Ironman race in the north of the Quebec province and a mixed triathlon, both citing the safety of athletes as the reason. And to avoid adding insult to injury, the Laval district of Montreal cut bus fares to $1 for Sunday and Monday to minimise vehicle emissions. Heavy rain is expected on Monday or Tuesday and it is hoped this will restore some air quality in the region. This, as 450 wildfires are currently burning across Canada, with 240 deemed out of control and 7.4 million hectares of forest destroyed since January. God in his grace and mercy is warning the world of his impending judgment. The Bible refers to this judgment as the tribulation in which God will pour out his wrath on an unbelieving an unrepentant world. I have had many people ask the question, how do you know Jesus is returning? And why is today any different than any other time in history? Jesus gives his followers the answer to that question in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Jesus told his followers that there would be a convergence of Bible prophecy right before his return. Notice Jesus said, when these things begin to happen, Jesus used the plural word things, meaning when you see multiple prophecies converging at the same time, that his return was at the doors, as we read in Matthew 24, 33. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, at the doors. There can be no denying all these things are beginning to take place. The next question is, how soon is the rapture of the church?
Chaos in the Kremlin. Russia came to the brink of civil war this weekend. The uprising has left President Vladimir Putin both humiliated and vulnerable. The Russian government is trying to project the image that everything is under control. Others say the crisis shows Putin's war and his regime are crumbling. Dale Hurd reports. In a video released by the Russian government, Defense Minister Choigu is said to be inspecting troops in Ukraine. Choigu was one of the leaders Yevgeny Prigozhin's mercenary army was coming after for alleged corruption and incompetence in running the war in Ukraine. But the biggest victim of the uprising has been Vladimir Putin himself. One UK newspaper cites British intelligence that it was Kremlin threats against the families of Wagner Group leaders that forced them to abandon their march to Moscow. Still, the 36 hours of turmoil left Vladimir Putin looking humiliated and vulnerable. We've seen some very serious cracks emerge. 16 months ago, Putin was uh, on the doorstep of, of Kyiv in Ukraine, looking to take the city in a matter of days, erase the country from the map. Now, he's had to defend Moscow. Friday, Prigozhin, a longtime Putin ally whose Wagner private army has been fighting alongside Russia in Ukraine, announced a march for justice, effectively an uprising against Russian military leaders. Wagner forces seize control of two Russian military hubs in the South Friday, and Russian media reported the downing of several helicopters and a military plane. In Rostov-on-Don, Russians were seen cheering and applauding as Prigozhin and his convoy headed to Moscow. But they never made it, turning back just 120 miles from the capital, amid reports of a deal with Putin calling for Prigozhin to leave Russia for nearby Belarus. Russia now says it's dropping its charges of mutiny against Prigozhin. But the damage against Vladimir Putin's image as a leader who cannot be challenged is by most accounts immense. Perhaps just as importantly, Prigozhin has lifted the veil on Russian state propaganda on the war in Ukraine, telling the Russian people they've been lied to. Putin himself went on national TV to respond to Prigozhin, and Prigozhin said that, that your government has lied to you. This is not a war that NATO started. There are no Nazis in Ukraine. Taking down the very premise makes it much more difficult for Putin to continue to turn to the Russian people and say we should continue to send people to die in this war. Russian British commentator Vlad Vexler says the crisis now allows Russians for the first time to consider a future without Vladimir Putin. Now it's a little more possible for Russians and say, what if we don't go down to the bottom of the inferno with Mr. Putin? What if there is an alternative? The White House says it will continue to support Ukraine in its defense against Russia. In a phone call, President Zelensky asked for more weapons and shared concerns that Russia may be planning to blow up the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. A Russian airstrike over a busy market in the rebel-held Idlib province in northwestern Syria killed at least nine people on Sunday. Neither Syria nor Russia commented on the airstrike. Though Damascus says strikes in the northwest province target armed rebel groups. Syria's pro-government newspaper Al-Watan, citing an unidentified security source, said that the airstrike targeted militants and the weapons depot. Hundreds of dolphins and sea lions are washing up on beaches in California. Experts say toxic algae is to blame. CBS's Carter Evans went to a rescue center today to see how they're trying to save the animals. Carter, good evening. Well, good evening. Here at the Marine Mammal Care Center, they are taking care of 56 sea lions, and they're at capacity. But so many more animals need help that they're building new enclosures in the parking lot. <laughs> Each one of these sea lions is sick from a deadly toxin. This one's so lethargic it can't seem to hold its head up. Another is having seizures, and most of them cannot eat on their own. Thank you. I see a lot of young pups here. A lot of these animals are pregnant. Now, it is a concern that pups may have been exposed. Veterinarian Lauren Palmer says the sea lions get sick after consuming fish that have eaten toxic algae. There's no way these animals can avoid this because it's in their food supply. Yeah, they couldn't avoid it even if they knew. Under the right conditions, the algae creates a neurotoxin called domoic acid, and it appears to have spread further offshore than in the past. So beachgoers are also seeing 
poison dolphins. We're receiving over 300 calls a day. The numbers are sincerely unprecedented in, in my history, which has been 35 years. Dr. Sam Dover's organization is rescuing and treating scores of sick sea lions stranded on Southern California beaches. When we go out there and you see so many animals, we'll, we'll go respond to one and we'll look down the beach 100 yards, there's another one and then another one. Experts say hundreds of animals have already died. How long is this going to go on for? Well, you never really know, but in my past experience, these blooms have lasted between four to six weeks. Now, it's not just marine mammals. Experts say domoic acid can affect people as well. And Adriana, right now, California's health department is urging people not to eat shellfish from affected areas. Hosea 4, 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in it languish. And also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. God is judging the world in these last days the same way he judged Israel in Hosea 4.3. The prophet Hosea tells us the reasons God judged Israel. No faithfulness or steadfast love, no knowledge of God in the land, Swearing, bearing false witness, lying, murder, stealing, and adultery. Sounds a lot like America, doesn't it? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? Appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.